We've all seen planes on lumber. Winding grain patterns that look like swirling rivers and peaking cathedrals is fine and all. But what if we could bring out the dazzling visual features hidden inside of the lumber? At the same time, make it stronger. All by simply cutting the lumber differently. This, my friends, this, my friends is quarter saw lumber. When we're quarter sawing logs, we're looking to get the best lumber off them. And so one of the things that first thing you gotta do in the middle is you gotta open a log up. We're looking in there and we see that there's some really nice, clear, clean lumber, no knots. On a quarter, when you're gonna quarter saw a log, you need a very high quality log with lots of years of growth with no branches. So you need a big log. I would say typically 20 inches plus in diameter that we need. Only certain parts of the logs can actually make quarter saw lumber. We'll explain a little bit later why we need bigger logs. And you're gonna find out what we do with the rest. So hold on to your shorts there, brother. We'll get there. Once you've got the log opened up, then the next step in the process is gonna be to pull off the big chunks of wood that we then can uh, recycle back onto the mill for quarter sawing. So what are the advantages of quarter sawn lumber? Well, quarter sawn lumber, in my opinion, is more pretty. Quarter sawn lumber is where your grain is basically at a 90 degree angle to your board, the width of your board, where rift is more like a, you would say a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So you still have tight grain, but you don't end up with the rays um, or the flecking that you would typically get in quarter sawn lumber. Because of the way the lumber is cut, the grain pattern is perpendicular to the board, sort of like shown in this diagram right here. Yep. And so that makes the board stronger. If you were to take little tiny s sticks and bundle them together um, vertical like that and try to bend it, it'd be, you can imagine, it'd be harder to bend that way. I figured the best way I can demonstrate the differences between quarter sawn and rift sawn is by using paint sticks. Each one of these sticks represents a grain pad. And on face sawn lumber, you can see that it the grain goes parallel with the face of the board. Now with quarter sawn lumber, the grain is perpendicular to the face of the board. Pretty sure it's perpendicular. It's perpendicular. I gotta Google stuff. Anyways, you can see the best way to tell the differences between quarter sawn and face sawn lumber is to look at the end of the board. The face of the board runs this way with the grain pattern going perpendicular to the face of the board, up and down. That's quarter sawn lumber. Okay, stay. And with face sawn lumber, the grain pattern goes parallel with the face of the board. That's one of the main advantages why people used to uh, use quarter sawn lumber for its durability and strength. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the face sawn lumber is where the grain goes perpendicular with the parallel. Parallel. The, the grain parallel goes the parallel board. with the width of the board. What he said. Next step of the process here is just to, here I've got a tape measure. I'm looking to see how far down I think I can cut without hitting knots. When that tree was really little, it had branches shooting out of it, right? And as a tree grows up and the canopy gets higher, those little branches on the bottom are deprived of sunlight, so they die and then they fall off. And the tree grows over those. And then you get years and years and years of growth that doesn't have any branches. That's what you need for quarter sawing. As the tree gets bigger, branches fall off. The tree grows around the old part the canopy grows higher, and essentially the younger tree is inside of this bigger tree. Hope that explains it well too. The outside of the log, the outer part of the log is the most valuable lumber. Yeah, it's, it's the highest quality lumber. <clears throat> now we're rolling that camp back on, and what we do is we actually turn the camp up a quarter turn. So quarter sawing, a quarter turn. So now we're cutting so, so that the grain is running vertical on the can instead of horizontal. You can't take a log or a tree that has a bunch of branches and get clear lumber off of it. It's not possible. And you can't, like, I said, I've had customers say, bring me a log, I want you to sell this up, I want to do some knotty pine paneling. But if it's a pine tree that doesn't have any branches, it can't be knotty pine paneling because there's no knots in it. Yep. You know, at least not until you get in towards the center of the log. Yep, once we pull all the high grade lumber off the outside, then we're going to cut pallet parts out of the center. It's a way for us to utilize that center for something that it's really good for. Yeah, so that there's the most minimal amount of waste mm -hmm. out of each log. Even the slab wood that comes out from the outside of the log with the bark still on it gets bundled up and sold to the public as slab wood for firewood options. Yep, we got that can't, but it won't slide off the loader arm, so I'm just going to give it a little assistance. And this is a 
side of the so wall you can, that you're going to quarter saw. Here. Yep. In fact, you see all those other chunks of wood over there are chunks that we already took off the outside of the log, and now we've brought them back around. And so then this is the process of quarter and rift sawing the lumber right here. Okay, so you essentially cut it like an H, and then you'll make two cuts out of the middle part, right? Two so or three, whatever that gives two me. Two or whatever, and then the middle piece gets made into pallet parts. Yep. And then the top and bottom pieces get quarter sawn again. Yep. So I notice sometimes on these beams that you're doing quarter sawn with, you'll make one pass and then you'll drop it. And you'll make another pass and you'll drop it. And then when you get lower, you'd make just four or five turn passes to complete it. Why do you do it like that instead of just continually going through? A few different variables there. Sometimes the blade pulls the board off the side a little bit. So then it would get in the way of the mill going back and forth. So I'll just dump them off. Sometimes just to see what's going on because I can always roll that cant a different direction. So you're always looking for the best lumber, right? Okay. Sometimes it pays to roll a cant around to see, you know, what's in there, what you're gonna, you know, what maybe a different side might look better. <clears throat> Another reason that we would do that would be just because like some boards need to get edged. Well, edging boards takes more time. So if I dump a few off for them, they can deal with those while I'm sawing other boards. Also, it gives the guys a chance not to get overrun by all the boards getting dumped off at the same time to stack. So it's easier for them to sort if they get a few boards at a time versus just a whole bunch that get dumped off and they're in a hurry. Which type of cut is more prone to warping, twisting, bowing, and cupping? Flat sawn lumber is more prone to warping, twisting, bowing, and cupping. Quarter sawn doesn't typically do those. It more goes bending right to left. So the board's flat, it, it, it moves this way. It doesn't really move this way. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine with face sawn lumber, it'd be easier to bend this way than this way. Now with quarter sawn lumber, you can see that the grain patterns are perpendicular to the face of the board, and it would be easier to bend left and right. Just kind of like how Kendall was explaining earlier. I hope that explains it well. What method of cutting is less expensive and produces less waste? Flat sawn lumber is easier to cut. It's less time consuming. So because it takes less time, it's less expensive. Also, flat sawn lumber, you don't need as high quality logs. You can buy cheaper logs to do flat sawn lumber. And I would also say that flat sawn typically would produce less waste because you end up throwing out a little bit more lumber. What are the advantages of rift sawn? I guess if you don't like the rays or the flecking uh, in that tight grained wood, then rift sawn is the perfect thing for you. Another really Really good rift sawn use is if you were to cut a large like four by four some bigger chunks of wood rift sawn will dry the least well rift sawn will crack the least when it dries because it can kind of shrink on all sides um, whereas flat sawn stuff it they tend to crack on one side because the pith's closer and the growth rings are different. So that's one nice thing about rift sawn. So I got the different types of cuts of quarter sawn. Mm -hmm. There's the triple cut here where it sort of makes a couple passes, then turns the log a quarter turn and makes a couple passes and turns the log and makes a couple more over and over again like that. And then we got, on the complete opposite side, we have the alternate quarter sawing method where it literally just, you keep turning the, the log a quarter turn and make a cut, quarter turn, make a cut from the bottom, quarter turn, make a cut, quarter turn, make a cut, over and over again like that. Yeah, so you take those cans and keep rolling them. Yep, yep. Yeah. Then there's the common quarter sawing method where it literally just takes the quarter of a log and it tilts it up and then they just saw it completely flat all the way through that quarter piece of the log, which creates a lot more rift sawn than quarter sawn. It's a lot easier that way, that way you're not messing with the logs as much. And then there's the radial quarter sawing, which produces a lot more waste as you can see why, where they take the quarter sawn log and they make a true cut of quarter sawn each pass. It's sometimes called the true quarter sawn method. It literally takes each cut, takes a piece of waste, then a quarter sawn, then a piece of waste, then the quarter sawn, then move it down. Sure. So they're just slowly, so slowly rotating, rotating it. Rotating it. Yep. Yep. So that's a couple old school methods of making quarter sawn cuts. Nowadays you see on the YouTube a lot of guys <laughs> trying to figure out different little sneaky ways to, to do it more efficiently and all the power to that. Yep. Hey, Wait, look who's working. Yep, that's proof right there. 
I actually do more than one this. time in the last two years. Kyle has stacked a board. <laughs> it's proof. I do more than just sit at a desk. We hired John to cut up some logs for us with this LT40 Woodmiser saw. He showed us some golden LT40 tips in this video right here. But there's a catch. We ran into some problems with a rotten log that held us back. Do we spend precious time cutting it up? Or is the log not even worth it? Head over to that video and find out what we did. We'll see, see you there. Now, with quarter sawn, we simply turn each stick where the grain pattern. Should plan this out a little bit better. 